Yo mama so fat. They did a story on how fat she was on the Channel 3 News. I switched to Channel 7 and you could still see her in the corner of the screen. A brunette tells a blonde she had sex with a Brazilian. Blonde says, Oh my God, you slut. How many is a Brazilian? God creates humans as they were meant to be. Also, God, new rules. I need you all to cut the extra skin off your penis. I boo this monk walks up to a hot dog vendor and says, Make me one with everything. After a brief chuckle, the vendor makes the hot dog and gives it to the monk, saying, That will be four dollars, please. Der the monk hands over a ten dollar bill. He finds himself waiting uncomfortably while the vendor does nothing except stare back at him. Awkwardly, the monk asks, What about my change? Yes, indeed, replies the hot dog vendor. Change must come from within. It's great that Turkey is providing heavy armored vehicles to Ukraine. Everyone loves tanks giving Turkey. So I put a giant map of the world up on the wall and gave my wife it all. I told her wherever it lands is where we go on holiday. I guess we're spending three weeks behind the fridge. What word starts with E and ends in E but only has one letter in it? Envelope. I got a lift to the 11th floor and as I got out, the operator said, have a good day there, son. Don't call me son. I said. You're not my dad. He scratched his head. No, but I brought you up, didn't I? So, a politician dies and ends up standing in front of the pearly gates. St. Peter looks at him for a second, flicks through his book, and finds his name. So, you're a politician. Well, yes. Is that a problem? Oh no, no problem. But we've recently adopted a new system for people in your line of work. And unfortunately you will have to spend a day in hell. After that, however, you're free to choose where you want to spend eternity. Wait, I have to spend a day in hell, says the politician. That's the rules, says St. Peter, clicks his fingers, and the guy disappears and awakes, curled up with his hands over his eyes. Knowing he's in hell, cautiously, he listens for the screams, sniffs the air for brimstone, and finds nothing. Just the smell of, is that fabric softener, and cut grass. This can't be right. Open your eyes, says a voice. Come on, wakey wakey, we've only got 24 hours. Nervously, he uncovers his eyes, looks around, and sees he's in a hotel room. A nice one too. Wait, this is a penthouse suite, and there's a smiling man in a suit, holding a martini. Who are you? The politician asks. Well, I'm Satan, says the man, handing him the drink and helping him to his feet. Welcome to hell. Wait, this is hell, but where's all the pain and suffering? He asks. Satan throws him a wink. Oh, we've been a bit misrepresented over the years. It's a long story. Anyway, this is your room. The mini bar is of course free, as is the room service. There is extra towels next to the hot tub, and if you need anything, just call reception. But enough of this. It's a beautiful day, and if you'd care to look outside. Slightly stunned by the opulent surroundings, the man wanders over to the floor to ceiling windows through which the sun is glowing. Looks far down and sees a group of people cheering and waving at him from a golf course. It's one of five pro-level courses on site, and there's another six just a few minutes drive out past the beach in Haba, says Satan, answering his unasked question. So they head down in the lift, walk out through the glittering lobby where everyone waves and welcomes the man, as Satan signs autographs and cheerily talks shop with the laughing stock and as he walks out, 
he sees the group on the golf course are made up of every one of his old friends. People he's admired for years but never met or worked with and people whose work he's admired but died long before his career started. And out of the middle of this group walks his wife, with a massive smile and the body she had when she was 20, who throws her arms around him and plants a delicate kiss on his cheek. Everyone cheers and applauds. He spends the day in the bright sunshine on the course, having the time of his life laughing at jokes and carrying important discussions putting the world to rights with his friends while holding his delighted wife next to him as she gazes lovingly at him. Later, they return to the hotel for dinner and have an enormous meal, perfectly cooked, which descends into a food fight when someone accidentally throws a bread roll at the next table where Gandhi is having a game of truth or dare with Marilyn Monroe as everyone is falling about laughing and flinging breadsticks at each other. His wife whispers in his ear, and they return to their penthouse suite and spend the rest of the night together. After six hours of intense passion, the man falls deep into the 100% Egyptian cotton pillows and falls into a deep and happy sleep. He was woken up by St. Peter. So that was hell. Wasn't what you were expecting. I bet. No, sir, says the man. So then, you can make your choice. It's hell, which you saw, or heaven, which has choral singing, talking to God, white robes, and so on. Well, I know this sounds strange, but on balance, I think I'd prefer hell, says the politician. Not a problem. We totally understand. Enjoy, says St. Peter, and clicks his fingers again. The man wakes up in total darkness, the stench of ammonia filling the air and distant screams the only noise. As he adjusts, he can see the only light is from belches of flame far away, illuminating the ragged remains of people being tortured or burning in a sulfurous ocean. A sudden bolt of lightning reveals Satan next to him, wearing the same suit as before and grinning holding a soldering iron in one hand and a coil of razor wire in the other. What's this? He cries. Where's the hotel? Where's my wife? Where's the mini bar, the golf courses, the pool, the restaurant, the free drinks and the sunshine? Good question, says Satan. You see, yesterday we were campaigning, but today you voted. An old man calls his son and says, Listen, your mother and I are getting divorced. 45 years of misery is enough. Dad, what are you talking about? The son screams. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer. He says. He hangs up. Now, the son is worried. He calls his sister. She says. Like how they're getting divorced. She calls their father immediately. You're not getting divorced. Don't do another thing. The two of us are flying home tomorrow to talk about this. Until then, don't call a lawyer and do not file a paper. Do you hear me? She hangs up the phone. The old man turns to his wife and says, Okay, they're both coming for Christmas and paying their own airfares. <laughs>